They have mild <laughs> winters, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We kind of we have the rainy season and the sunny season. But like like we've been kind of saying over the last uh, last couple of days, hearing people's stories, we've been saying there's a lot worse places you could get stuck oh, than yeah. Newfoundland. Tell me about it. At yes. least Newfoundland's like a party seven days of, of the week. You yeah. can always have a good time here, yeah. right? But Leslie, they were out around. You were, the, the weather didn't stop you. I understand, according to your, your tweets there, you were out around Fort Amherst and everything. Yeah, yeah. We wanted to go, go do something, you know, I, something kind of sightseeing. Like, it, it was pretty hard to get my uh, my hungover self out of the <laughs> hotel yesterday. But uh, I'm really glad I did. We saw some pretty cool stuff up why, there. Why would you be hungover? Social networking. Well, this is actually a, a, a Twitter question, so it, it makes a lot of sense. But just curious as how important social networking is, I guess, for a band to, you know, get themselves out to people now. Like, how could you do it without it, really? Um, you know, there's always a way, but, uh, you know, the days of, of running around town in the middle of the night and putting up posters and trying to not get caught by the cops... <laughs> and they're kind of over, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's all moved on to the internet now, and it's a it's a great thing for bands, right? You know, uh, the because of the way the music industry is these days, it's constantly changing, and it's a lot has been left now up to the bands to promote themselves as opposed to the record labels and management and stuff like that. So to to favor drive, it's it's extremely important. You know, we we love the social media. We're on MySpace. We're on Facebook. We we've been doing the Facebook thing now for about a year. It's right. Facebook.com/slash Favor Drive. If you go there and check it out, we all have our own Twitter addresses. You can follow us on mm -hmm. Twitter. We uh, interact with each other. We interact with the fans. And you know, it's just you know, it's a tool that that bands in the '90s they couldn't even Didn't imagine, have. right? Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's a a way for you to personally, you know, interact with, with your fans on a day-to-day -day basis. That's the coolest part of it, I think, yeah. is the Twitter mm -hmm. thing, because I, yeah. like, I, I could tweet you and all of a sudden it comes back and it feels yeah. like, really like you're having a conversation with oh, some yeah. of your, it's, your it's, favorite musicians. You know? It's the ultimate self-promotion tool, it yeah. really is, so it's, you know, uh, social media is just huge, it's, it's the way of the future for bands. For well, sure. the name of the album has a social media tie-in, doesn't it? Yes, it does, actually. We, uh, we called the album Can't Keep a Secret because... Uh, Faber cannot keep a secret. <laughs> so uh, while we were in the final stages of mixing the album, uh, you know, most bands, they, they would freak out if their album got leaked on the internet before before release date. But Faber's on there on Twitter sending fans, you know, little 30-second clips of songs and stuff. And so that's kind of where it came from. We, we just kind of went against the advice of the record label and against the advice of the management. And we just started leaking stuff out Let me ask your thoughts on something here now, because there was a piece on the news the other night about Jim Cuddy from Blue Road, mm -hmm. who was a big advocate of uh, musicians actually having control of their music and, you know, the free downloading from, you know, sites where you can get it free. What's, what's your take on that, anyway? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's, a, it's a bittersweet kind of pill for artists, you know. Yeah. It's, it's causing a change in the music industry, but it's really no different than in the 80s when, you know, recordable cassettes came out and people you know yeah. were buying an album and copying it and giving it to their friends and stuff you know the music the music industry will always bounce back because people will always want music to listen to right mm -hmm. and so you know it's it's just more about being a little bit more innovative as an artist now and finding finding different revenue streams and you know being being able to do do different things which you know that ties into the social media thing exactly. again and and it's kind of it's it's bringing more life to to the rock shows again, like you know the live concerts. It's like like something like this Headley show tonight at Mile One. You know we we played with Simple Plan here even a year and a half ago, but this Headley show is like, you know it's gonna be jam packed, oh, sold right you. out. Like you so know what I liked about that? I saw when we were on the red carpet the other night, and we saw Jacob Hogarth and the band coming out of Gate Four. And I'm assuming they were just finishing maybe a dress rehearsal or something mm -hmm. at that point. They didn't walk right onto the red carpet. They walked out around right in the midst of all the limousines and there was a crowd of other people on the other side of the barricade and they stopped and did autographs and a meet and greet all along the way there i thought that was the coolest thing to see you know everyone else was just there the right carpet and that's fine too but there were a group of fans over there that couldn't get close to it i thought what a what a canadian and personal mm -hmm. thing to do mm -hmm. you know? yeah they're really really they're great really dudes really nice guys and yeah. they definitely appreciate their fans for sure